Hey friends, I have a really fun video to bring you today. I am partnering with Lydia from May Wigs to bring you a wig review, talk about density when it comes to human hair wigs, and compare a small cap size to a medium cap size. Now this is all gonna be about human hair in this video, so just be warned in case you are not at all interested in human hair, then maybe this isn't the right video for you, but if someday you might be interested or you're currently in the market for human hair, you might want to know a little bit about density because that's something you may have to choose when making a purchase. And so I hope to help you with that today in addition to singing the praises of Lydia over at May Wigs. She's really wonderful and I'll tell you all about her. If you want to know more, stick around. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. I am partnering with Lydia from May Wigs to bring you this video. She sent me Marissa, and a while back she sent me Willow, which I have already reviewed, and I did a Tip Tuesday video showing you how to cut lace on these types of wigs. I'll cover that very briefly in this video, but I will link that video down below, so if you've never seen it, and you could benefit from learning how I cut back a 13-inch lace front, then that'll be linked below. So I'm gonna timestamp everything in the description in case you're only here to see certain things, but here's how it's gonna go. I'm gonna review the piece on my head for you so that you can understand this piece and this color a little bit better. I will also show you this color outside. I did all of that with Willow, and I'll make sure that video is linked below, so in case you wanna see this gorgeous red, you can go do that. I'm not gonna cover that in this video. After I do that brief review, then I'm going to show you guys the difference between 130 density and 150 density from May Wigs. I'm gonna talk about why purchasing a wig from different retailers, especially human hair, can be so challenging because there's so many variations and there's not a real standard that everybody follows, which can be really hard for us as the consumer. So let's start with the review of this piece. All right, so this is Marissa and she is a beautiful blonde with a very soft root. Now, from what I can gather, Lydia has pretty much all the same type of cap on all of her pieces. And so what the biggest difference is, is the color. So she's named all of her pieces, and that name refers to the color. So for example, Willow is red, this gorgeous red. And Marissa is blonde, but she's also got variations in blonde. She's got darker rooted blonde. She's got brunette, so she has a lot to choose from when it comes to color. In addition, she does customs. So if you're really struggling to find a specific type of wig, or maybe a, a more, more accurately, I should say, a specific color, you could do a video call with Lydia and she can potentially help you get what you're looking for. And I think that's really tremendous because there aren't a lot of human hair retailers that take customs anymore. And so that makes it really hard for us as a wig wearer because if we're looking for something really specific, it could be like finding a needle in a haystack waiting for a retailer to post a wig in the color that you're looking for. So just a little tip on May wigs. Not only does she carry pieces, kind of stock colors, but you can also get something custom for you. Let's take a look at Marissa from all sides. Now, when it comes to cap, let me show you with Willow. May Wigs caps are 13 by 6 inch lace top wigs. What that means is you've got 13 inches of lace. Let me untwist these sides here. 13 inches of lace from here beyond the ears all the way around and then 6 inches of lace all the way to the crown. So on this piece right here, the lace is going all the way back behind the ears. This is all lace back here. And I've got all of this, the whole top is free parting. So you can change the part, you can part it anywhere that you want to part it. And the beauty of a 13 inch lace front is it gives you a lot of flexibility. If you don't have any bio hair or you're buying a wig that is a complete, just a com total different color from your bio hair, then you might want to leave more lace. And what you can do is you can 
cut it so that it you know it clears your ear but it covers all of your bio hair and then you can use an adhesive to sort of glue it down and then you've got a wig that you can pull back in updos, high ponytails, everything that you want and it's going to look like it's growing out of your head because that lace goes all the way down. On the flip side, if you don't want to ever use an adhesive on your lace and you either have bio hair and you can blend your bio hair with the wig, then you can cut that lace back further. That will allow for tucking without having to glue the lace down, but you will have to blend your bio hair to do that. I made a video using Willow here showing you how I cut back 13 inch lace fronts. They're also known as lace frontals to work best for me. When I first started wearing wigs and I got my first 13 inch lace front, I hated it. I didn't know how to wear it. I didn't know how to cut back the lace. I didn't realize I could cut it back further because when you start to cut it back further, you do cut some of the hair off. You lose some of the hair. I show you that in my video where I show you how I do this. I wasn't ready to be cutting any of the hair off of these wigs, so I had a, at least one lace frontal that I never wore because I didn't know what to do with it. Now, I love them because I can cut them back far enough and I just pull my bio hair out to blend. If my bio hair does not blend with the color that I'm wearing, and it doesn't at all with Willow, then I just use a root touch-up powder. I have every color that Style Edit, that's the brand, carries, and I just color my bio hair to match the wig. So that's my tip for you. If you, because you can see what I do here, I leave, I buzz all of my hair, but I leave this hair so that I can blend it with my wigs. And when I'm walking around the house with no wig on, I just tuck it behind my ears. I've learned to do that over five years of wig wearing, and I just hope that telling you this now, you'll tuck that away in the back of your head to make your wig wearing journey just a little bit easier in the future. Now something to be aware of with lace frontals is they can run a little loose, sometimes even a little big. So I like to wear a wig grip with my lace frontals and I love the grip from the hair grip. That's my favorite that's on the market today. And there's some really great ones out there. This just happens to be one that I love. And another thing that will sometimes be included with a lace frontal is a strap. Lydia includes a removable strap. It just has a hook and hooks right in so that you can put your wig on and use this strap to create tension by, and actually I'm not sure that this is going to work because this is a small cap. So let me take my wig grip off. So basically you tuck it behind your head and then you pull the wig over that. Now, the benefit of a strap on a lace frontal is it does create some extra tension because there are no ear tabs, there's no tension around here. So if you're going to leave your lace longer, then you want a little bit of extra tension to help that to lay flat on your head. I, since I cut my lace back so far and I wear a wig grip, I tend to take those straps out and don't use them, but it's nice to have it in case you need it. So just a little tip for you, lace frontals are a little looser and in order to get a little bit more tension on them, you can add a strap or often they'll come with a strap and a wig grip will help a ton in keeping that more secure on your head. The wig on my head is a small cap and Willow is in a medium cap. My circumference is 21 and a quarter. And the first one I got was Willow. And I found that she was just a little bit big on me. Now, because I cut that lace back so far and I don't have ear tabs to deal with, it's not really that big of a deal um, that this is just a little big on me because one of the areas where a wig that's too big is a challenge is the ear to ear, especially a wig that has ear tabs because it might sit on your ears or press up against your ears and be really uncomfortable. But with a lace frontal, you do have a little bit of flexibility in cutting that lace back a little bit further to sort of accommodate for something that's a little you bit You do too big. have the ability to adjust the cap a little bit with the hook adjusters, so do keep that in mind. There's a little bit of flexibility. At her website, she has some measurements listed so that you can choose what cap size to get for you. My measurements are listed in the description box below. I would say if your measurements are similar to mine, 
This small cap is fitting me like a dream. I absolutely love it and it is definitely the right size for my head measurement. If you're unsure, just reach out to Lydia. She can help you make a, a decision about which size is best for you. All right, let's talk about color. This is what I would consider a gorgeous medium blonde with lighter blonde ends. She is definitely kind of almost ombre it to lighter blondes on the end. Can you see how much lighter those are? And up here, it's a like a real kind of a medium to dark blonde. And then it flows into more of a medium blonde. And then it flows into a lighter blonde. This is not what I would consider necessarily rooted because in person, that's not a dark root. It's looking really dark in my viewfinder right now. This is a what I would consider to be a medium blonde root. And so the medium blonde, it starts a little bit darker, gets a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter all the way down. I wouldn't exactly say this is a yellow blonde. It's definitely more of a warm blonde. It's not really yellow. It's almost like light brownish into medium blonde. Bl Blondes are hard for me because I'm not a natural blonde to find the right words. But if you like more of a medium, kind of a medium dark blonde going into lighter blonde, if you could do like a color like this and your biggest struggle are roots being too dark, these roots are not dark. You'll definitely be able to see that when I get outside. They're just the perfect, just a darker tone of the blonde. All right, friends, let's take a look at this color outside really quick. You can see it gets a little bit lighter toward the ends. And look at how natural that root is. It's not a dark root at all. So natural, just a beautiful blonde. And if you wanted it a little bit cooler or kind of whiter, you could tone it with purple shampoo. I think that would probably work great. It's just stunning. So pretty. Really excited to be able to show you guys a blonde from Maywigs. And Maxie's watching there in the door. And let me see if I can get him in here. Look at all the chickens. They all decided to come up and see what I'm doing. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Oops, there's my finger. Hope that helped. Let's talk about length first. There is really right, no friends, standard in how a retailer measures the length where we talk about on length, their wigs. Density, so and you may get a retailer that is sending you a 21 inch length, for example, and that's measured from the crown down to the longest length. Or you might get a retailer that measures length from the nape, the bottom of the wig, the nape right here, down to the longest length. On the piece on my head, the crown down measurement is 21 inches. The nape down measurement is 14 inches. That's a huge difference. Lydia measures her length from the nape down. So when you're at her website, you can uh, choose your length. Every wig that you can order from her, you can choose cap size, you can choose density, and you can choose length. So if you're ever gonna place an order with a human hair retailer, Ask them how they measure their length because that's going to tell you more about what length you're going to wind up with and hopefully you won't be disappointed. But do keep in mind that Lydia measures her length from the nape and down. finally, let's talk about density. When you're choosing a human hair wig, you may notice a density measurement. Sometimes it's just that's what's available. They're selling a piece and it's this amount of density. Sometimes you can choose. With May wigs, you can choose your density anywhere from 130, what's well, 130, 150, 180. Uh, Willow here is 150 density. And 
Marissa is 130 density. I would say 130 density is what you see a lot from a lot of where I notice the biggest difference with 130 density, especially with May wigs. Do keep in mind, density is another thing that there's no real standard for. And I've had wigs that claim to be 130 density and felt super full and super thick compared to other wigs that I have that are 130 density. So you will find some variation, unfortunately, in density between retailers but what I'm noticing is it's a lot sort of lighter can you see how kind of light it is on the ends that is a really natural look if you look around at people's bio hair who have longer hair you'll notice that it gets a lot lighter at the ends the ends are thicker on this one I'll take a side-by-side -side picture of these and stick them on the end so that you can see what I mean. But the ends just aren't as, as sort of sparse as they were on Marissa because this is 150 density. And I also notice it up here. It does feel like more hair. Part of that is this cap is really big on me, so it can be really hard to tell, but it doesn't feel like super thick up here. I would say they're very similar up here but it gets a little bit thicker as it goes down and then the ends are just a little bit uh, fuller than on Marissa. So between Marissa and Willow, I don't know if just holding them side by side, if you can kind of tell that the ends on this one are a lot more sparse. Not unnatural. Please don't hear me say unnatural. Very, very natural. The question is, do you want like va va voom hair or do you want kind of natural everyday hair? It's not significant, but it is definitely a difference. So that is the difference in the density. You got everything that you needed from this video. I do really love Lydia and May wigs. I think they're wonderful. The options that they offer are almost unheard of. I really haven't come across very many retailers where you have this many options when you place your order. Length, density, cap size, it's just really incredible. And her prices are wonderful. She is in the UK, so she, if you're in the United States or in another country, she will ship to you from the UK. I've ordered from the UK a lot. It hasn't really ever been an issue for me. Her website does give you the currency of your country, which makes it a lot easier, but I really love her prices. I love the quality of this hair, which is absolutely stunning. When I got Willow, I couldn't believe how nice that hair was. She really is doing wonderful things, and I'm proud to be representing her in this video. I really, really am. She's just great. Let me know if you have any questions though. I never ever want to push you to buy something. I don't want to create like a FOMO, fear of missing out, if it's not right for you. Not everything's right for every person. I want to bring you every resource that I can because I just never know what will work for someone. But if you want to know if I recommend Maywigs, 100% enthusiastically I do. The coupon code WIGSISTER25 will save you $25 off of a purchase. Let me know though. Any questions, I'm always Remember, happy I've got my, my review of Willow linked below and my video where I show how I cut a lace frontal. Hopefully that'll help you if you ever have to do that yourself. Love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Hey friends, thanks so much for watching. Here are a few videos I think you might enjoy. Go ahead and click on one and watch.